Medal of Honor has always been about kind of heroism and valor during World War II, and you know one of the things that defined the franchise was storming the beaches of Normandy, that sort of feeling of being on a Higgins boat as the ramp goes down. And so we were looking for an iconic moment, but at the same time looking for something that uh, established a thread that we could take all the way through the war. And really nothing compares to the massive airdrops, the idea of standing at the doorway of a C-47, leaping out into Fortress Europe, into the battlefield below. These are some of the biggest military operations of the war, and they've really only kind of narrowly been touched on in a lot of games. So having a single thread, the airborne thread, that wove through all those huge operations was just too tempting to pass up. So every single, every one of the operations begins with an airdrop. You start inside a C-47, uh, get to the jump door. From the moment you leap from the, uh, from the airplane, you have complete control. You hear your chute snap, you grab the risers, and you can steer anywhere in the combat space that you want. That gives the players the ability to start anywhere in the combat space. It also gives you the opportunity to kind of tactically survey the entire mission before you drop in. So you kind of have a narrow amount of time to look at the battlefield below, decide where you want to try to land. You can steer toward the green smoke flares to try to keep yourself safe. You can follow allied shoots to the ground and try to rally with your squad. Or you can choose to try to solo one of the objectives and land across enemy lines inside the heart of enemy territory and see if you can solo the mission. One of the most important skills a player has once you've decided where you're going to land is is uh, being able to control your landing because you can, it's possible to have a bad landing in this game. If you get sideways, if you land toward the side, if you land toward the back, then you can get what's called a botched landing if you come into the ground too hard, which means that basically the landing will bring you to your knees and you have to stand up, unclip, pull up your weapon before you can enter combat. If you do that behind enemy lines in an area of high enemy concentration, you're not going to last very long. Uh, the other type of landing uh, is a flared landing and that's when you get close to the ground, you pull down on the risers of the chute, you slow your defense, uh, your descent, and you basically land on your feet, and you can pull your weapon up pretty quickly and get into combat fast. But the pro move, the best landing, is what's called a greased landing. When you do that, you, uh, you kind of come in uh, almost like a modern day sort of flying wing type parachute, and you, you're moving forward at a runner's pace, and you hit the ground at a full run, automatically shed your, uh, shed your harness, bring the weapon up and you're in combat within a quarter of a second to a half of a second. So uh, what we did with uh, a new system called the affordance engine is we gave our characters in the game much more awareness of the environment around them. Essentially the affordance engine scores the value of the terrain around them. So uh, a wall will get one value, a pillbox or a bunker will get another value, a room that's surrounded by stone, stone will get another value, a window doorway. All these things are saved in the game in a way that the characters can understand and use to make decisions about how they move through the environment. And that means that I can take a character and drop him anywhere in any of our kind of very realistic levels and he'll know how to use that environment to the best advantage in combat. So if you've played a World War II game up to now, chances are you've probably fired you know, anywhere from 25 to 50 percent or more of the weapons that were actually available and used during World War II. And we wanted to move away from some of the very traditional weapons. And a big tool for that was the new weapon upgrade system, which is a first for a World War II game. You know, not every Thompson that rolled off the assembly line was the same as every other Thompson. There was a lot of uh, upgrades, field modifications, and customizations that were available to soldiers in the field. And we're delivering those modifications to you in the game. And the way the system works is, uh, the more proficient you get with the weapon, you earn commendations. As you earn a commendation, you, you, you become eligible for that upgrade and it gets automatically applied. Now the upgrade, they change the firing characteristics of the weapon. They basically improve the capabilities of the weapon, whether it's improving the accuracy, improving the range, the reload rate, uh, improving the ammo capacity, all kinds of different things like that. Every single weapon in the game has at least three different upgrades, including all of the grenades. So, there's a huge number of upgrades that you can earn during the course of the game. Well, one of the first reviews in the, in the game that we had with some of the executives at EA where we were sort of showing off the basic concepts of the game, we we're showing off the airdrop, we we're showing off kind of a new way of laying out the environment, and one of the executives just kind of under his breath said, it seems like you guys are focused on making a game about freedom. And that really stuck with me. It was very early and for somebody to have that kind of insight, because that's really what we're trying to do here is give give players the freedom to play the game however they want to play. 
So you can go anywhere you want, you can, you know, you've got objectives in the environment, but how you get there is completely up to you. What weapons you use is completely up to you. Whether you engage in short range, close range combat, medium range, long range, uh, whether you hang with your allies or whether you try to solo the mission, there's just the number of options that are available to the player are kind of, they're, they're sort of a new concept in FPS. Medal of Honor Airborne is going to be available for Xbox 360, PC, and PS3, August 28th, 2007.